All right. Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Sarah Moore here. And today I have the pleasure of uh, speaking with my long term friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Kate Charlesworth, or should I say Dr. Dr. Kate Charlesworth. <laughs> Um, so Kate is the sustainability lead of um, South East Sydney Local Health District and she has a public health fellowship and PhD, hence the double doctor title. Uh, and Kate was researching uh, future environmentally sustainable um, health systems and what they would look like. So thanks so much for speaking with me, Kate. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So I guess we'll just launch into the conversation and just see where it takes us. I mean, I've got lots of, um, I'm so interested in what you're doing. And uh, so I guess if we could just start off talking a little bit about um, how climate change and environmental destruction is impacting on human health. Um, and yeah, let's sort of, sort of explore that a little bit. Yeah, so thanks. It's, re it's, it's a good question. It's often where I start. So I do a lot of speaking with doctors and nurses and I ask them this question and the the common responses are of malaria, heat stress, bushfires, that sort of stuff. Mm. And I'm like, yep, that's all, that's all true. Cataracts and infectious diseases and, and so on. Um, but then I say, they're not the big issues. Okay. And the big issues, and I have another slide that says the big issues are food and water insecurity, civil unrest, mass migration, economic disruption. They're the big issues. Because that's yeah. really what we're... On track for and now if you look at some of the medical literature the leading sort of journals and um, reports around the world from world health, world health organization leading journals are saying this is a planetary emergency this is a health emergency yeah. um and that you know health professionals and doctors have a really key role to play in that you know yeah. um and yeah so i try and use the term now some planetary emergency or health emergency because this is sort of a term that we can understand so that you yeah. know they're, they're the big these are the things that we're really worried about in terms of the health impacts um, you know, it's extreme weather, all sorts of impacts from that, mental yeah. health, yeah. Um, vector-borne disease, but these sort of the food and water insecurity and the, and the mass migration things are the really key things. So I tell the story. I often put up a slide showing um, Easter, a picture of Easter Island mm. um, because that, of course, this is a, a remote island, uh, Polynesian island out in the middle of the Pacific. And the story of Easter Island is that it was once, by geological records, a heavily forested and vegetated island. Um, supporting thousands of people in quite a thriving civilization. But by the time the European explorers arrived a few hundred years later, um, they'd cut down all their trees, used up all their resources, and there were just a few um, people left, eking out a pretty miserable existence, just a few mm. hundred people left. Yeah. Um, that, of course, is, is what's happening on a planetary scale. And the interconnections mm. between um, health and the, and the environment, you know, we are fundamentally dependent as humans on mm. those ecosystems for everything. Um, yes. And that's, you know, what we're doing. A, a colleague of mine who worked in ICU said it's almost like the earth is our like, our life support system. Mm. It's almost like we're turning it off. So that, yeah. they're, the, they're the health impacts, you know, the, yeah. all, the, all the things that people think of, but actually it's mm. much more serious than that. Absolutely. I think that's a really nice um, metaphor, actually, because it, it brings it home to, yeah, how it affects us as individuals um, and how we all have to, you know, work together to, you know, to look after Mother Nature, who is literally our mother looking after us and keeping us alive. Yeah. Um, so I'd really love to hear about some of the um, important changes that are happening in, in, happening in New South Wales health that you're trying to um, implement in order to counter these, you know, issues and problems that we are acutely aware okay. of. The first thing to say is that New South Wales health is not doing that well at all. Um, <laughs> There's, my impression is that there's good, I did a lot of my training in the UK and the NHS is probably 10 years ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, they actually have a national unit which is tasked with measuring and reducing the carbon emissions of the whole NHS and they've been remarkably successful. They've got the carbon footprint of the NHS down by about nearly 20% now. Wow. And this is it's quite a big thing. The NHS, I used to say, is the fourth largest employer in the world after Walmart, the Chinese Army and Indian Railways or something. So it's a, that's a big wow. organisation. Yeah. For them to, to do that, it's quite extraordinary. So the NHS is doing well. Um, parts of the US are doing really well. Mm. Um, in Australia, Victoria is very good. Um, really? They're very progressive. New South Wales, not so much. Um, in WA, they've got a climate and health inquiry going on. Um, mm -hmm. Some colleagues and I have submitted for that. So I guess my impression overall is that there's pockets of good practice all over the place and all over the country, mm. but not really broad-scale, comprehensive mm. approach that we need. Yeah. Um, 
but so here, I think the interesting thing for me is that um, a lot of when I when people ask me what I do, everyone thinks it's sort of about waste and energy, and that's mm -hmm. really important. That's part of it. Yeah. But actually, the research that's come out has shown has measured the carbon footprint of the Australian health system. Yep. And the interesting findings from that is that half of our carbon footprint is hospitals, yep. and nearly 20%, so 19% of our total carbon footprint is from pharmaceuticals. Mm. So I guess the key message there is that waste and energy are important, but that's just part of it. That's just mm. sort of the start. You know, we really need to think our current health and care systems are intrinsically carbon intensive. Mm. We're still sort of based on hospitals and doctors and nurses and investigations and pills. Mm. You know, the same model as it was 100 years ago, really. Mm. Um, and that we need to be thinking much more broadly and creatively about that. Mm. So one of the um, sort of my research interests, I guess, is about carbon accounting. So that's saying in the future, carbon is going to be as important as money. It's going to be like the new currency. Mm. And we need to start preparing for that. So we need to start in everything we do in the health service, we measure patient outcomes and you know, people's experience, which is important. And we measure the financial costs, mm. but we don't yet measure the carbon costs. So carbon accounting is about me. what's the carbon cost of the blood test that we're ordering? What's the carbon cost of a typical ED presentation or an acute care services admission or something like that? So that we can start to, you know, bring in that sort of that currency. And that Awareness. Mm. Yeah. But having said that, you know, um, doctors and nurses, the thing that really bugs people in my experience is waste. Yeah. You know? It's a really big issue. And there's a war on waste. I don't yeah. know if anyone, and there's a war on waste. Hospitals? Princess Alexandra Hospital, yeah, just, yeah. That just recently came out. So waste is a really key thing. That's a great way for people to get involved mm. and to get started. So, you know, and it's important. Yeah. It's, part of the, it's part of the puzzle. It's not the whole. Mm. Um, Actually, um, Craig Rewcastle came and spoke at the Rural Health West Conference in March. Oh. So that was really great, actually, um, just to have his um, take on it. And, yeah, I've, I've um, posted his little video from the hospital on my um, uh, Facebook page as well. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a great little um, insight, and and you know, thing you can make a lot of simple changes and have quite a huge impact. So I think it's mm. you know, it's exciting times, and mm. we should feel very empowered to you know to move forward. Mm. Um, so I guess you know, moving on from that, Kate, what's what are the sorts of things that we can do as individuals that um, will contribute to protecting our environment and also our health going forward? Okay, so. Um, I usually ask people to do th three things. To do something personally, mm -hmm. do something professionally or in your workplace, mm -hmm. um, and then join a group. Okay. So the first one, so the personal thing. So who, I often ask, who knows their carbon footprint? Mm. Nobody knows their carbon footprint. Um, so that's the first thing. So you can just go online, you can Google it, carbon footprint. WWF is a good one. And that's just a really good way of really getting your head around, okay, what are the key contributions that I'm making, you know? Yeah. Key ways what are the, the key things in my carbon footprint? How, where am I going to get the most bang for my buck in terms of reducing it? Sure. Um, so that's a good one. And flying, those of you who like travelling will be disappointed because flying yes. is, of course, right up there. Yeah. Um, so personal. And then, you know, getting your own house in order at home. Mm -hmm. And there's a, you know, there's a lot of um, examples of, you know, things that you can do there. Reduce, yeah. reuse, recycle. Yeah. Um, biodiversity at home. Lots of councils and things are really proactive in that. Yeah. Um, and then professionally. So... Um, a lot of our staff here, as I mentioned, waste, there seems to be a key sort of bugbear. Mm. Um, so a lot of um, little green teams and wards and teams here, recycling projects. Again, recycling is important, but I just really focus on the reduced. You know, if you look mm. at the waste hierarchy, it's reduce or avoid, mm. reduce, reuse, recycle. So recycling, you know, that's fine, but the better things to really catch the chase. Not use it in the first place. Use it in the first place, yeah. So... Mm. I mean, things like keep cups, you know, a lot of our staff here, rather than um, giving, you know, plastic crap for Kris Kringle, you get a keep cup or you get a pot plant for your office or something like that. So just yeah. those sorts of things, they're just small, but they really get people starting to think, you know, mm. one of our emergency department teams here, that's what they started out with, keep cups and water bottles for all their staff. Yeah. And the amount of coffee cups. Yeah. They really, oh, you know, I know. That, Extraordinary, you know. Check out this. Time. This I've been collecting. I don't use them anymore, but this is what I've managed to collect. Like it's, and that's just me. And I don't, mm. you know, that wouldn't have taken long. Yeah, exactly. And ruling out, you know, styrofoam cups and things like that. We just don't get those anymore. Lots of lots of good alternatives. Um, and again, lots of ideas around that the house and 
and hospital people do. And the last one is joining group. And that's really important, I think, because it's really nice to be part of a team yeah. and to connect with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. So for health professionals, I suggested DEA, Doctors mm -hmm. of the Environment Australia, or yeah. CAHA, Climate and Health Alliance. But, you know, in your, in your community is a really strong thing as well. And they, a lot of the thinking is that, I mean, clearly there's, you know, in my view, an unconscionable failure of leadership. Um, at all levels of government, really. I mean, government's completely failing to take an evidence-based approach to this issue. So the thinking is, but there's actually a huge amount happening at a sub-national level. Yeah. So these are the mayors, the premiers, the governors, the chief execs, you know, the, at that sort of level, there's actually a huge amount going on. And the scale of their ambition is really impressive. You know, you've got mm. mayors around the world committing to zero carbon cities, you know, zero, you know, circular economies, zero net waste cities, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, within a short time scale. So there's mm -hmm. a lot happening at that level. Mm -hmm. um, and so I lead into that because, you know, count local councils, it's a really mm -hmm. key thing. This, in the absence of leadership up here, we're going to have to start to just do things yeah. ourselves. That's right. So a lot of communities are taking up, you know, are doing that. Um, so I'm, for instance, we set up a sustainability team at my daughter's school. And yeah. next week we're having um, a 2040. Has any, 2040 would be a great film. Yeah, they've just screened it last night, actually. My friend Melia put it, um, put it on just locally. Yeah, I didn't right. go, unfortunately, but yes. The, the fabulous thing about 2040 is that, um, so the actor-director Damon Gamow says, with, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom around climate change, but actually there's another story to tell, a really positive story about how the world could be in 2040 yeah. if we just adopted the best technologies and, and, and solutions that we have available today. Mm -hmm. So we're... Um, in our community, we're having a 2040 screening next week. It's a fundraiser for our local schools, so for solar my schools. I don't know if you have that in WA. It's a New South Wales program mm -hmm. for solar panels for my daughter's school. Okay. And Damon Gamma and, and Zali Stegel, of course, who's our new federal MP in Warringah, which is where I live, which is yep. another story, which has been really nice to be involved in. Um, yep. They'll be speaking at that, you know, and right. showing the film, talking about, you know, what's our Mossman 2040? That's a suburb that I live in in Sydney. So. You know, those sorts of things. And actually, you know, connecting with people in your community is a, is a really powerful thing. Yeah. Um, so they're the sort of things I suggest. And then, of course, there's, you know, professional networks and other things, but that's more specific to health. Although I'm sure in a lot of professional groups have similar, you know, equivalent groups and networks. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I do agree. I think it's a, it's a really, you can have a really positive outlook um, when it comes to the environment. We just have to start, you know, really banding together and taking action and making it fun as well because all of these things can be so much fun and it doesn't have to be like missing out it can actually be you just have to get a bit creative um which i think you know um I, you know me i'm the eternal optimist but i think you know we have to be optimistic about this um if we're going to you know make any any change i, I think that's definitely what you say in this business you have to be pathologically optimistic <laughs> this field you know because you're exactly right and there's you know there's a good case to be made for the, for the mental health science on as well but yeah the most fun i've had this year was for instance involved in the zali campaign because that was a genuine grassroots push from people in the community really concerned about something and getting behind mm. something and being really active and it was mm. yeah so yeah. that's and that's so great to connect with like-minded people and, and yeah. be able to work together and i that's think something. you know that's really the the thing because you know so in so many ways the reason we don't have a lot of activism these days is well we do but i mean you know in australia for example like because we've just got everything we need now and um people aren't missing out on things so much whereas the environment really is something that we all need to look after we all yeah. need to rally together and um and like you say you know hold you know the government accountable and um and the way to do that is like you say ground ground or grassroots and um you know that groundswell and just, you know, the people will talk with their feet. <laughs> yeah, no, we really need that. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. The, the tragedy, I guess, of climate change is that there's been so much of a lag effect mm. that everything that we've been, all the pollution, of course, the last two, 200 years is about to catch up with us. It's almost like we've totally maxed out our credit cards now. Yes. Yeah. But that, I think what you're starting, well, I mean, we've just had a really hot summer. I mean, look at the heat waves in Europe mm. at the moment. Yeah. Really hot, hot winter here. Um, it's... It, people are starting to see, once you see it, start to see those tangible impacts. And the thing that gives me the most hope, I guess, is if you look at sort of historically, if you look at transformational change or disruptive change, it sort of tends to go like this and then you hit a tipping point mm -hmm. and then it's all hands on deck and everything happens at once. And that's just, you know, that's, 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 really, that's how humans, yeah, yeah, sort of tend to react to things. And when mm -hmm. we've got our backs against the wall, that's often the, the best instances of human ingenuity and creativity and so right. on. So 
Exactly. Yeah. You only have to look at war times to see how things change, you know, overnight, how people yep. all of a sudden create, you know, ideas and take action. So, no, that's exactly right. That's a really good analogy. That's what they're saying. We need almost like a war like footing now. And then everyone's in it. You're exactly right. In the Second World War, everyone accepted, um, you know, all the changes that had to be made because it was everyone was in it. Life or death. <laughs> yeah. And there was, you know, so that's, yeah, that analogy is exactly. Um, mm exactly right mm. fantastic um did you have anything else that you wanted to share Kate I didn't have any more specific questions for you um so yeah no, 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 no I don't think so it's just it's all hands on deck and everyone can do something you know I would yeah. say everyone can do something and we need everyone to do something mm. to get ourselves out of this mess you know? yeah and, um yeah it's it is it's good fun once you get involved there's mm. a huge amount happening you just have to find it seek it out yeah, great. Well, thank you so much, Kate. No, and what I'll do when I post this, um, I'll put a few links into the websites that you mentioned so that people can go and calculate their carbon footprint and, <laughs> and find some local groups to join. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time. It's been really illuminating and hopefully um, inspiring for the people that have been listening to us. You're very welcome, Sarah. Okay, then. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Thanks. Bye.